Hi guys, welcome back to Down Under Thailand. Video about rice harvesting. Now we're at the start of the rice season, consequently we're waiting on rain to fill the fields. Uh, we've had a bit of rain, not a great deal, but we need it to continue and then the crop will come on as the rains come on more. So with that in mind, I'm just going to show you a video from previous year, actually last year's harvest, to give you an idea of on, on how we go about harvesting and the importance of the rice season. And uh, I hope you enjoy. At the moment, the harvesters are in there. You can hear the noise. And you can just see the machine as I make my way through the, uh, the lemon trees. Majority of these ones at this end will come back nicely. And talking about the young lady there now. Hello. hello. Would you like to say hello to the people? Hello, somebody here. <laughs> There's a closer shot of the machine. The Yanma. I think they're somewhere in the region of a million baht. They are a lot of them that look the same size. How would you say? Same design. But um, in that same design, you can go different capabilities in that they have a holding tank. So a larger machine or a more expensive machine may have a bigger holding tank it may have a larger motor, it may have a, a wider cutting head. You know, as the difference between buying a, a, a compact saloon and a mid-size saloon or, or then a full-size saloon, similar thing happens with these. You, you know, you get what you pay for and you get more the larger you go. But there's limitations there. And a lot of guys stay for the small to mid-sized machines, pretty much it's not just the cost. The reality of it is that a lot of the rice paddies uh, can be awkward depths, shapes, sizes, have obstacles. The larger machines can often be like shooting yourself in your foot because they may not be able to maneuver suitably in those sorts of areas so having gone for a um, the small or mid-size is not a consideration of penny pinching it's a consideration of the area you're in the paddies you're dealing with and how the machine is capable of working in that environment so there's a lot that goes into it when I priced them, it was about four or five years ago. They were 850,000 baht, up to about 1.3 million. There's quite a lot of machine there for that. But there is a window of when they work and the rest of the year they sit there. So they got to work their little bottoms off to pay for them. And it means working every hour under the sun, under the moon, that they can run them. Some even run two teams and they do shifts on them. Just keep the machine running. There we are, recording again. I don't know how much I lost there, but here's the heads. So here's the rice. You can see it's not green anymore. Very, very light green and but it is more yellow and the yellow is the actual kernels you can see those here that's where the yellow comes from the heads are giving the crop that yellow feel appearance but a little bit disturbing my fingers you see the kernels drop off it's critical that we get that crop off now because every day that we leave it and those heads get drier, those kernels 
are less and less attached to the heads. And a bit of a breeze and really just drying, they'll start to drop and you'll end up with a percentage of your rice crop on the ground, gone. So, can't afford to, to lose it. <laughs> Talon is negotiating with the guy. He's saying, go over the other side, take that last run. Don't leave that little bit there. The sun has set here, guys. Now about 5.30. And... Don't get too close, so there's a clong down the back. A metre deep ditch full of water. And that's about as far as he can go, or he'll end up in it. Um, and that's one of the water channels that we use to um, to manage the level of the water in the fields. And there is the clong goes all the way along the back of the property, and then along the road all the way up to the big dam which is up there where the banana trees are. You can't see the dam, but you can see the banana trees. So Talon has talked him into taking that last lot, which is right on the edge of the walkway. He was going to leave it. But she said, no, 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 no. <laughs> that might be one more bag of rice. <laughs> And I've lost that. I don't know where she went. Oh, there she is. She's hiding. They've dug this ditch here to make it easier for the machine to cross over because it pitches up and down incredibly. I'll see if I can catch that for you. Um, and when it goes down into the new field, like it nosedives, They've got to be uh, sure that they can actually get the, um, the front cutting edge um, up, lifted up high enough on the hydraulics that it doesn't nosedive going to the field or they end up stuck. Now, this young lady's going through and getting some samples. And there's, there's the rice there, guys. There's the heads. That's beautiful. So, we are in, I call it the bottom half of the farm, but this area of the 13 lie, this is probably, it's not half, it's probably 60-65% of the actual land area. So, starting at that tree ahead and to the right of the machine going all the way across to the road which is over where those banana trees are the house is beyond those trees just there where I'm freeze framing there and zoom straight back in the house is in there and we'll turn beautiful blue sky to that big tree is a little bit into the property, but that one to the right of it, that's the back border. And that little tree in between them is actually the corner of the farm block. So that encompasses 60%, um, 60, 65%, but that equates to Tanley tells me about six rye under rice. But it will have done its job this year. Um, after this, after we've taken off the rice, we'll leave it a few months and the ground will drain a lot more. 
it'll be a, a lot drier than it is now. Um, but we don't need it too wet and waterlogged because we want the tractor to come through and to turn it. He'll just turn it very roughly with the big blades. Then he'll leave it for a few months and then he'll come back with the smaller blades and go over it again just to break it down level um, because in a few months, it's not really a few months, probably another six, seven months before we'll put in the uh, the next crop of rice the next year. So this land won't be doing very, very much in the meantime. And that's the nature of rice farming. Now in the other 40 plus percent of the farm, we have the lemon trees, we have bananas, we have rubber trees, we have the two uh, locations of flowers that Mem is cultivating, and um, obviously two dams, the house, and that's probably where most of our focus will be, because there won't be a lot happening down here. For us to do something else down here in the meantime would rely on a having a much more water resources than we've got. And if we had bigger resources or water resources, and that would probably mean a, a, a river nearby, then in all likelihood we would have enough resource there to be able to flood the fields again and have a second rice crop. So it's a bit of a bugbear, but um, that's the way it is. Mem's going back to the house. The machine is over there. He's heading back to where they actually entered uh, one of the other family properties down there. Um, and that's sort of where they're based. They've got their vehicles down there and the trailer and everything. Um, but the, the hopper is full of rice at the moment. That's why he hasn't cut this one when he came up here. He got the indicator that he needs to empty. So he'll be back to do this in a minute. But first he's going up there. He's going to empty the holding tank into the back of, they've got two pickups there. And then they will drive that around, it's really just around the corner, um, to our farm here. And um, we're going to lay that out on the concrete. And it's going to have two, three, four, five days of sun to fully dry the kernels before we bag them. Um, and then decide what we're going to keep and what we're going to sell. So um, that's where we're at with that. We're still waiting on the verdict on the harvesting machine. If they think it's something they can fix tonight or not. So Mem's just taken off with her son on the back of his motorbike because his one is out. <laughs> Whereas our car and our motorcycle is in. Um, the rice that we have here, uh, the rice that we have here now at the moment, one pickup full. Now I said I thought it might have been a couple of rye. Mem says that it's one rye or one and a half rye, um, which is what we've got here which is quite a lot of rice. Now, <laughs> she calls this one, this is the rice for eat. Well, all rice is for eating, but this is the rice that we are going to keep. So that will be our year's supply of rice for you know, the remainder of this year and before the next crop. The balance of the rice, which is now looking like it's about four and a half rye, so four times what's here, um, Mem's going to sell. So it won't come here. We won't lay it out to dry. It will go in the back of those pickups to the local rice company 
where it'll be dumped into a hopper and it'll be weighed as to what is there. It'll take a, a few, three or four uh, pickup loads to transport it. Um, but what happens at the rice company, they open an account in Talanese name and the rice comes there. It's emptied out of the utility into their weighing, their scales, their machine for weighing what it's like. Usually the way they do it is you'll drive the, um, the pickup in and they'll weigh it. Then they'll empty it out of the back and then they will drive the vehicle over the scales again and weigh the, uh, the empty weight of the utility pickup, whatever you want to call it. Depends on what country you come from. And obviously the, the difference in the two figures is the weight of rice. That will be credited to Talony's account. And after all of the, the pickup loads have been deposited there, she'll end up with a grand tally of her rice. Now, that will sit with them, and it's almost like a, um, a rice bank, and at which point she can make a decision if she's going to sell it all direct to them, or they'll hold on to it and store it, and she'll sell portions of it. Uh, at different times. Um, I'm not sure exactly how it fully works, but it seems a lot of people actually do that. You know, the company has the rice, the company has a kilo figure of what each customer has left there in the rice bank. Obviously, they use the rice that's there. They'll uh, process or sell it on to processing companies. Um, and they could end up that they don't have any rice kind of left there, but the customers basically have still got a credit figure of um, what they want to sell, when they want to sell it. It's an interesting sort of way of a bank account. Um, it's like dropping your money in there. Obviously, most banks invest all of that money when you want some back. Um, you make a withdrawal. Or a convert in this case, it's a conversion from a, a, a credit of the volume of rice you've got with them, and uh, you take the funds or the dollar value of them or the baht value of them in this case. So that might be all that's happening tonight um, until we get a verdict on the machine. Now it's it's about seven p.m. here at the moment, seven seven thirty. I haven't looked at my watch, but guesstimate. Now that is not late for them. If they can get that machine up and running in the next hour or two, um, they'll work that machine. They'll run till after midnight if they need to, to um, stay on their schedule. So harvest is pretty serious business. Uh, not too many things actually interrupted or get in the way. Okay guys, it's 8.15 and the machine's back working again. So as I said before, um, if they can get it running, they'll work all damn night, and that's pretty much what they're doing now. So let's see if we can get some footage for you. The machines are running away from us at the moment, but I'll just get some more suitable footwear on, which would probably be my boots. Okay, got the boots on. Let's go for a wander. Pretty damn dark. Now, that's the machine, got a hell of a lot of lights on the front of it, and it's coming towards us. Now, I'll take a, a track down here and see if I can get a better view for you. And there it is there. Come up here on some open ground.
<laughs> he surely bounces the thing around. Don't come too far back, mate. Okay. He runs that machine at a fair speed. And I guess he's got a bit of an urgency at the moment in that he's trying to pick up space and time. I'm heading out. Probably going out of the field of the, uh, the camera a bit. But there's somebody else coming into the field of the camera. Hello, young lady. You have better leave, no? Huh? I no. Cooking for oh, you have some lemongrass. You want to cook? Yeah, please. That looks beautiful. Tom Yang. Yang? I think it tastes good. I think him going very quick now. Yeah. Him want to finish. Yeah, because right then, not right now. Uh huh. And now is eight fifteen, so he lose maybe one hour, one hour thirty, I think. But he got the machine going again, so good for him. But he stopped down there. Why he stop? You think you take everything from there already? No. Still have more. Full. Come now. Full? Yeah. Also oh, quick. Okay, that must mean that there's a better yield because he went round and round here for maybe 30, 40 minutes before, before full. But now this time, only 15, 20 minutes. Wow. So that's boating for a good, you can't see me at the moment. Okay, I'll use some of his light. Um, let's come back here. He's asking Mem, I think, what does she want to do with this load? Keep it here or go to the rice company? Stop, stop, stop. Clong, clong. Oh, take care, clong. Clong. Not for now. Lot. Oh. Say lot. กับคุณแล้วมองคุณเด็บเตรียมแล้วมันไม่ได้ลดมันไม่ได้ลดเตรียมแล้วอ่ะอ๋อมองอีกครั้งไปหมดครับมองบัตรขุดอยู่นั่
energy goes off into the darkness. We can still see his lights. But I'm at maximum zoom now, he's a long way away. Okay, so it's got pretty late and the guys had some issues with the machine and that sort of put them behind a bit. And consequently they haven't eaten or anything, so Mem's cooked up some Tom Yum for them with uh, fish that she caught <laughs> over last night. And she went through and checked the nets today and brought them back. And so now we've got three of the guys sitting here and we've got some drinks for them and some food for them and they'll tuck in while a man's busy on the machine and uh, what else would you do? Of course you would. They're great workers, you've got to look after them.
So guys, that's the machine in the distance. It's 10.55 and they're finally wrapping up. So they've been here a good few hours now. It's a late night for them. I don't know if they're going to any other jobs. I wouldn't think so at this point. But um, you never know. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I, I hope you got something out of that. Please put some comments down below. Maybe there are particular subjects that you would like to have more information on, and I can address that and maybe make some videos along those lines that you can see shortly. Um, please subscribe. By all means, give me a like. And the comments, as I said before, they're always very welcome, and I'll answer all comments that I can. Thanks, guys. Catch you later. Bye for now.